Good morning, Sophia. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Cam and Bailey. Good morning, Alexis. It's 11 o'clock. <laughs> Good morning, Chris and Joshua. Good morning, Blake. Good morning, Dax. Good morning, Eliza and Alexis. Good morning, Helena. Good morning, Gabby and or Charlie and Frank. Good morning, Matty. Good morning, Sean. He was sitting right at my feet today. I know you're going to say good morning. Good morning, Lucy and Molly. It's, what is a Spinosaurus? I'll write that down. Spinosaurus. Good morning, Ella. Good morning, Addison and Juliet. Take the bug. Looking sleepy. Spent a lot of time outside yesterday. So you couldn't find a good spot. So he's extra sleepy today. He's so tired. Just a couple more minutes because I came on a little later than usual. I'm just going to wait for everybody to come in. Good morning, Lila. So tired. Look at this wrinkly face. So many wrinkles. Yes, we are doing a raptor today. All right, snuggle pumpkin, I gotta put you down. Where are you gonna go snuggle? Okay. All right. Good morning, Josephine. I love it. So fun. I wish I could see you guys too when we do this. That would be really fun. I love seeing your comments. He <laughs> was so tired. Good morning, Lana. All right, so I'm going to stop my music. Gooby will be back. He's actually sitting right next to me today. So he likes to put his bone on my shoe and chew it so it's resting on my foot at the same time duck billed dinosaur i'll write it down what that is. is it related to the duck billed platypus always like that all right so we have three um up today two are dinosaurs and one is an insect um to one, I guess one of the dinosaurs was requested, the insect was requested, and I kind of like this first one. So maybe it was requested by me. 
Okay, <clears throat> our first dinosaur that we're doing today is a Triceratops. And it is an herbivore, which means it eats plants. And its name means three horned face. It has three horns that come off its face. It has um, three large ones and then one small one at the front of, I guess we'd consider like his nose. Um, and also have a large um, kind of circle that comes off their head here. And that's actually called a frill. I didn't know what that was. Good morning, Manny. Um, so that's a, um, that's what that's called. It says large bony frill. So I guess it's a bone, um, that kind of sort of goes around their head like that. And one of the biggest, their biggest predators is the T-Rex. So in my final drawing, it's obviously on the same page as the T-Rex. I didn't put it on the same plane. I sort of put my two scarier, meaner dinosaurs on the front and my herbivore nicer dinosaurs down in the valley area and of course my flying in the back um and they're not 100 percent sure what the um horns were for they assume they were to defend themselves but that's not been proven so they eat low growing plants because they um you know this, they have all this big heavy weight they can't really move around too much like the brontosaurus can. So they eat low, hang, low plants um, and grasses on the ground. But they also think they may have used their horns to knock down taller plants, sort of knock them down, and then they can eat them because they couldn't reach up to eat them, so they could knock down plants. And their teeth are arranged. I thought this was an interesting fact. Their teeth are arranged in columns. And there's columns of teeth, and usually their columns are about three to five teeth, and then they have rows of these columns, and they're actually called batteries. Um, and so they can have 36 to 40 columns of teeth on each side, so meaning 36 to 40 times three to five on each side is how many teeth they have. So I thought that was pretty interesting um, little fact about them. Um, yesterday we did a T Rex and a brontosaurus and a pterodactyl. So you can get caught up um, if you watched yesterday's video. And yesterday we also created our background scene. Um, and I also mentioned we're gonna do two background scenes. We're gonna do one um, that's all on land in sort of a three layer land. And then on tomorrow, Wednesday, we're going to start um, a second area that has an underwater area or sort of like a I guess it could be ocean-esque and then more land because we're going to add some underwater prehistoric animals and some amphibians and more dinosaurs. So it, when you're doing your final, you can kind of pick and choose where to put everything. But because dinosaurs are large, it's going to be hard to fit everything on one piece of paper like we did with the farm and the pet shop. All right, so let's do our triceratops. Yes, you can still watch yesterday's video. It's up and it's labeled with uh, Jurassic Park 1 and the date. Right, first, let's show off my really cool fingernails. My students know that I um, usually have fun nails on and I haven't had any since we've been in quarantine, but I was able to get some from my friend Tess um, who does Color Street. These are Color Street nails. So I thought they, they were pretty fun, springy, summery nails, sort of artsy. So if anybody's interested, I know I do shout outs for my jewelry. So for my nails, Color Street, Tess Dorsey, if you are looking for some nails. And they also have nails for smaller hands. Okay, so we're gonna start with the body. And it's not gonna be quite an oval shape. It's sort of, sort of an oval, but the back is sort of bigger. And what I found that several times that I've drawn this is I've had to readjust the size. If that's our extra using pencil, you, should, you can readjust it. We are going to do a stegosaurus. It is on the list, I think, for Thursday. I'll write something down. All right, so now we're going to add that frill like I was talking about, and that's going to be a large oval. A 
be attached to the body. And of course, you want to erase this line here. Thank you, Ella. Yeah, I love my nails. I usually have them themed, like I had Christmas nails and Valentine's nails, and Thanksgiving nails and Halloween nails. I did not get any Easter nails this week or this year. So I went with just sort of like a springy summery set. All right, now we're gonna add the back leg and it has that hind leg shape. And then a, sort of a flat foot. Oh, that's a neat science fair project. I like that. Color Street first nail polish. Well, I'll tell you, if you interview people, you definitely like Color Street over nail polish because it's so much easier to use and it lasts so much longer. And I wash my hands even before quarantine. I wash my hands all the time. So I was always getting paint or some other art material on them. All right, so now we're going to add our front leg and the leg that faces us. So I forgot to erase, but you're going to want to erase this line and this line. I sure can post a show for the nails. That's a great idea. All right, so then I will add a front foot over here. Well, it's a front leg, but it's in behind and one back here. So now they have four. <laughs> We're doing a triceratops. Nope, yes, triceratops, sorry. For some reason I get triceratops and stegosaurus mixed up, which I should not, but for some reason I do. Good morning, Ben and Ellie. All right, so now I'm going to add a tail. It's just going to come right off the back. I'm going to do it like this. Okay, now we're going to add the face. The face starts by um, starting a line on the frill that comes down and kind of hooks and back up, almost like almost looks like a beak. That's the top part of the face. And then we're going to have the bottom part. All right, now you're going to add the horns. So like I said, one horn is, or two horns are on like sort of the back part of the head, but one's on one side and one's on the other. So there's some, definitely some lines you want to erase in there. Then one is on the back part. So you want to erase all this in here if possible. And then the front horn sort of goes on that nose part and goes back the other way. I don't know what the fastest dinosaur is. Maverick, do you know? Did not look that backed up. If Maverick doesn't know, I can look it up for tomorrow. There you go, there's the answer. What is that? Struth, the struth, or we miss? Struthriomimus, the velociraptor. Struthriomimus. 
And then we're gonna add a little nose area, or like nostril, and an eye. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. You're gonna obviously, it'll look better when you erase these lines, but now it looks sort of pieced together. Um, also, feel free to make it whatever. Struff I uh, minus. There you go. Thank you for the phonics lesson on that. Um, remember, you can make it whatever color. I colored mine orange with some red dots on the back. Um, it could be whatever you want, though. Okay. So moving on. Kim, do you need something? then you need to wait a minute. All right, so our next one was requested and it is an insect that did live in this time period and it is the dragonfly. And what can be really cool about doing the dragonfly in our areas is you can do more than one. So you can put it in the first scene we make, you can also add it to the second scene, you could do a couple of them. One of mine, I drew it um, not to scale because it's not that much smaller than my pterodactyl and I know that a pterodactyl has a wingspan of three feet and dragonfly is very small but I wanted to be able to see all the details in mine so I made it a little bit bigger than, necessary, than it would be but you can do it however you like um, we are not talking about this now you can ask me later okay so the dragonfly um, has a hind wing, so that it has what is two sets of wings, a front and a back. And the back wing is actually bigger than the front set of wings. They're broader. It has multifaceted eyes, so it can see in multiple directions. It doesn't have the greatest eyesight because it can see like that, but it can see all over at any given time and um, know when predators are coming or know where to find food. Um, it is sometimes colorful, and of course I made mine colorful. Um, some of the examples I saw were greens and blues and purples. I made mine um, blue or sort of like an aqua and pink. Um, so they're a lot of, they're usually brightly colored and sort of has that iridescent look to them as well. So if you have any like silver or gold uh, pencils, markers, that would be really cool. Um, and they're predators, so they are not, um, an insect that would go to flowers to eat. They eat small insects that fly by them. So they're usually um, feeding as they're flying. So they fly and then just capture whatever they can ca um, prey on in midair. So I thought that was pretty cool. I actually meant to do some research in years past, sometimes when we're at the beach in North Carolina, there can be swarms of dragonflies and I'm not sure what brings them there um, or what they're attracted to. And I believe they can, they also eat insects that bother us like mosquitoes. Um, so they're, they're good to have. All right, so let's do our dragonfly. Okay, so we're gonna start with the um, head and I didn't write the body parts down, but I think it's head, abdomen, and thorax. I'm going to start with the head. I want to draw it a little bit bigger than I normally would, just so you can see it. So the head and the abdomen and the thorax. Again, I'm drawing this pretty big. Then we're going to add the set of wings. And I found that the first side of the wing, the front, they sort of bend forward, not back. So you sort of get a, a round here 
and it sort of angles back. So if it goes out and then angles like that, a little bit of a bend in the bottom part. This is a dragonfly. And then the second part, it's going to start just next to it. And remember, it's a little bit bigger. And now we're going to add some details. Remember, we talked about those eyes. And they really bug out <laughs> from their head. Then it has, I'm not sure exactly if this is like a arm kind of thing or antenna. And then we're going to add some sort of lines that sort of show the thinness, like the veins, I guess, inside the wings. And they're very dainty, little, so not perfectly straight lines, sort of wiggly. And the top half, again, you don't have to make it exactly like this. And then some in the bottom. And then some lines. Hey, Jack's calling you back. And that is our dragonfly. And of course, I made um, it really big. But you know what? They may have been bigger back then, and it's up to you. You can make it as big as you want. You could have a huge dragonfly that's flying across the sky and attacking the brontosaurus. Up to you. All right. Here goes Hank. And our last one is was requested and it's very popular. Um, it was one of the stars, the evil stars of the original Jurassic Park movie. And I believe I need to look this up because I need for it. Coming right back. Okay, I thought maybe it was what um, Dino from the Flintstones is. Okay, so our last dinosaur of the day is the Velociraptor, also known just as the Raptor. And um, its name means Swift Caesar in Latin. That gets things quickly. Um, it is a carnivore and has a very long tail and a long, low skull. But in the movie, they um, make it look really big and scary. Um, and it is scary because it, um, you know, it's a carnivore, so it would attack humans if they were around. But it's not as big, or most of them weren't as big. Yes, that's exactly what it's about to say, Maverick. It was roughly the size of a turkey, so pretty small, and it had feathers. So it almost looked like a prehistoric turkey. Um, not as fat and more um, streamlined. 
However, um, when I drew mine, I drew it more looking like the one from the movie. I did make it a little smaller. I did not add feathers. But if you'd like to add feathers, you can, because there is fossil proof that some of them had feathers. And they hunted and scavenged for food. Um, and they would eat reptiles, amphibians, insects, small dinosaurs, small mammals. So they pretty much would eat anything that they would either hunt or that they found or stole from another dinosaur. Um, so they're pretty nasty animals. They're very, very in the movie. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw our swift Caesar. We're gonna start with an oval that's sort of angled. And this is gonna actually end up being the main part of the body. And just to show you, I'm gonna go ahead and do the tail off of it. You can understand. Now let's go ahead and add the head because right now it looks a little weird. And the head is going to, or the neck, it's going to come off here. And the head is a little bit square shaped. And the neck here. So I'll start here. We are going to do a fantasy animal week. I think we talked about doing that next week, sort of like a, um, a mythological forest. So we can kind of combine mythological creatures like unicorns and dragons with um, forest animals like raccoons and foxes and other things like that. All right, so let's add the rest of its face. So it's going to come down, angle, that. and then it's going to have a bump for its eye. So you're going to want to erase that line. I'm sort of going to draw over it. Let's give it a little notch nostril. And of course, it has to have teeth. The marker is a little thick, but you can see it has teeth in there. All right now, it sort of has legs that are similar to the T-Rex and it has back legs that it stands up on and then front arms that sort of hang down and not as long. So we're gonna start with the back leg. And then we're going to add the, the rear leg that we can't see the whole thing. And then The front arms. And then just like with any of the other ones, you can add things to it. Of course, you can add feathers if that's what you wanted. Um, I added some, some stripes. You can make it look however you want. It look, always looks strange when it has all the lines on. It looks like it has like a football in the middle of it. All 
right, now I'm going to show you my final as it's coming along. So you can see I have my Triceratops down here. Like I was saying, I put it in the same area as the Brontosaurus because they aren't going to hurt each other. I'm just going to pretend like these two can't get off of this hill, this front plane, to attack anybody else. So I have my T-Rex from yesterday and my Velociraptor here. So I tried to make that somewhat to scale. And then I'm by the mountain is my pterodactyl and my dragonfly. And like I said, I made my dragonfly a little bit larger than it probably should be, but I want to be able to put my details of my wings. You can see details in there. All right, so for tomorrow, we are going to um, do three more animals. Let's see if I made it. Yes, I made my plan for tomorrow. Um, so three prehistoric animals. They may not all be dinosaurs. And we're also going to um, do our second sheet so we can have some underwater area. And then as you start laying everything out in your final, you can decide which area they want to go in. Um, I'm going to try to get him. I'm going to sneak up on him. Hold on. As soon as he saw me coming, he started running away. <laughs> so here he is. Everybody say bye to the goob. Hanky. Hanky, look. He's looking at Ziggy. Like, Ziggy gets to get down and play. Why don't I get to get down and play? Ziggy. Ziggy, come here. Let's see if I can get him. Ziggy. Oh, he's like under the table. And Hank's trying to get him. So no Ziggy, just Hank. So have a great day. So much better day than yesterday, at least here on the East Coast. So thankful for that. We'll get out and get some fresh air. Run around. Take Hank out, wear him out. He gets nice and sleepy again. And I'll see you guys tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Bye. <laughs> just trying to eat my hand.